So gameplay animation is an incredibly difficult job, I'm not gonna lie, and when you see behind the scenes in games or animators talking about their work in games, normally comes across as incredibly technical. Now for everybody that wants to be an animator, a gameplay animator, that might seem like the barrier of entry is really high because there's so many technicalities behind being a gameplay animator. Now, Andrew Tan asked me a really good question on a previous video, which I'll add here in the video, um, asking me exactly about how technical is gameplay animation and how involved are you with uh, engineers or coders, um, basically the people behind the code to make your animations work. Now, I think this is a question very relevant to everybody out there because it's not the very first time that I'm getting this question. And I think it confuses a lot of people um, and it puts off a lot of people from actually pursuing gameplay animation as a career, right? So I'm gonna talk in this video what it entails to be a gameplay animator, how technical is it really? And is it as scary as it might seem from the outside? So let's do this. Welcome to another video, everybody. Glad to have you guys here. My name is Harvey Newman, for those that don't know me, and I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel with all of you. Now, I wanna preface this by saying that animation is animation, doesn't matter where you work, right? That's the very first thing. So I think that whatever I'm gonna say next, see it as you need to be a good animator before you do anything else, right? So if you wanna get into film, which is the most popular way to be an animator. Now, you know, the 12 principles of animation apply to film because that's where they came from. But those principles apply to very much anything that you do. It doesn't matter if you work in VFX or TV or games or film, those principles apply and you need to be very good at the animation side of things before you start a career in animation, no matter what you do. Now, Having said that, getting that out of the way, um, gameplay animation is very different. So there was a time that 2D animation was the only thing that existed out there. And then 3D animation came aboard and basically shifted the scene in a huge way, especially when Toy Story dropped. It was amazing. Everybody was scratching their heads. How did they do that? And what happened next, which was a little bit sad, is that a lot of 2D animators kind of like lost a little bit of their jobs because uh, of the 3D-ness of the whole environment, right? Everything was shifted to computers. It was all about 3D software. It was all about clicking buttons. And it was really, really complicated to a lot of people that were just used to basically drawing with pencil and paper. And animation is already difficult enough with just pencil and paper because you have to actually think about so many things on how the human body moves and how they act and, you know, personality and what's in the head of a character and things like that. So when you bolt on, on top of everything that you have to do as an animator, that you have to also learn this piece of software that looks incredibly complex. It's daunting, right? So I don't blame any animator out there that actually looked at Maya or 3D Max or whatever software and went, eh, not for me, right? So after that, games came on board, right? And then we started complicating things even further because now not only do you have to learn one piece of software, which is 3D Max or Maya or Blender, now you have to learn a whole bunch of other things, which is the engine. And the engine from the outside looks way more complex than any piece of software, 3D software out there. So once again, I don't blame anybody that feels perhaps a little bit afraid, not afraid, uh, afraid is not the right word, but maybe cautious or unwilling, I should say, to actually learn uh, this big piece of thing that is basically a game engine, because you can do so many things in it. With all that said, here's the thing. Just like any piece of software, so if you know Maya right now, if you don't 3D Max or Blender or whatever, you really don't have to learn all of the things that that software does in order to be whatever you want to be. So I'm gonna rephrase that again. If you wanna be an animator and you actually are using Blender today, you don't have to learn all of the things that Blender can do. You have to learn the animation tools within Blender in order for you to be an animator, right? The same thing applies to 
an engine. You have to kind of learn exactly where the animation logic is and the buttons for animation and all these other things and blueprints a little bit, but you don't really have to learn about everything in the engine because that's even bigger than any software out there. Now, with that in mind, first thing that you have to do as an animator is be a good animator, right? So if you spend 90% of your time being a really good animator, then you'll have half of the way there. The other 10%, for sure, you should definitely start dabbling into an engine. The most popular one out there is Unreal. There's many tutorials out there on how to get started with Unreal in animation. I'll link some of those below or somewhere in the video um, and you guys can actually get started. What you'll most likely find out, especially if you're versed into a 3D software and if you actually like to learn new pieces of software, is that as you see tutorials of how Unreal works or how an engine works, you will see that it's actually quite a lot of fun to learn those things. Now, there's another side of this piece, which is getting lost in the software. Because what happens as well to a lot of people is that learning the software and learning where the buttons are and what's the capabilities of the software and what can you do, sometimes becomes more of a thing or more important even than animation itself because it's fun, right? Animation is grind and learning something new is fun. So you have to keep in mind that what you're going to be doing 90% of the time, if not more, is going to be animations, right? So you need to spend an equal amount of time learning how to animate. As much of a grind that might seem at times, but that is the skill that studios are looking for. Now, if you know the engine and you know how to actually create animation logic or you know how to deal with blueprint or creating blend spaces, all of those things are really nice to have as an animator when you go into games. However, not all studios are looking for that right? The one thing they're going to hire for is for your animation skills, not so much for the technical skills that you have in engine, because at this point in time, and I'm pretty sure that's, that will change in the future, studios are very much willing to teach you how they work with the engine of choice that they have in the studio, right? So they actually are looking for an animator that can animate a lot. They can be really good at animation at a high quality and they, then they can actually go ahead, pick up this person, hire them and then teach them this is how we use the engine and this is the buttons that you have to press in order to get your animations in engine. So this is the point that we are right now in history. So learning about the engine is not absolutely essential for you as an animator. However, I think things are changing, right? More and more studios are asking you, asking animators to actually learn how to implement their animations at the very least, right? How to get them in engine and get them running in engine, right? Now, this is very difficult because each project has their own criteria and depends on where you are in the project, you can or cannot implement your animations just yet because there's a lot of departments that have to actually build the game to a certain point where your animations or your animation process is iterative, right? So you can actually make an animation, put it in game, press some buttons, goes into game and it works. But to get to that point, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen beforehand. And that is a video for another day because it's a big thing. But just know that not all the studios out there are basically looking for somebody technical. Normally, what the way it works is that in these studios, the smaller the studio, the more technical you need to be, mainly because you have to be more than one person at the same time, or you have to fulfill more than one position at the same time, I should say. So they are looking not only for the animator, but they are looking for the rigor, maybe. They may be looking for the technical animator, which is the guy that implements the animations in game, and sometimes even a little bit of code, right? So they are looking for somebody that can not only do the animations, but they can do the whole process up to the point that you can see the character running on the screen, right? So that's smaller studios. Now, when you go into like double A studios, right? Mid-level sized studios, normally they have at least one technical animator to help you and one animation coder to help you or just one coder to help you, depends, right? So with that pipeline means that you can make the animations, right? You can maybe do a basic implementation of your animations pass it along to your technical animator, and then he can actually go in and work on the animation logic and making sure the animation works. Then that goes into a coder or an engineer for them to actually kind of like do their magic and actually get things to be new or different or whatever they need to do. Now, the AAA studios, now they have a battalion of people working on animation, right? And this is basically where you actually are just animating 
right? They don't even even uh, require you to actually have any technical skills most of the time, because what they really want is somebody to actually animate their boots off and then basically just get the animation to somebody and that somebody can implement it, right? So they will give you a premise so saying something like what we need is basically a walk and a run and a sprint. Give me those within these timeframes and then pass it along to Peter, the technical animator, and he will go and implement the thing in game and also add his magic in terms of blueprint and all that stuff. And then he will speak with a coder or an engineer to make sure that that works in game. If anything is not working, he'll come back to you and then he will say, this is not really uh, according to spec or is too fast or is too slow or we gave you this spec and actually it doesn't fit within the game, we need to change it. The range needs to be longer or it needs to be faster or whatever it is. So you go back, do your animation work, send it back to the technical animator and the whole process starts again. And that's basically how a AAA studio works. So you start to see that your technical skills um, are either really needed at, at the bottom, at the indie level, or they are not needed at all when you are in a AAA studio, right? So this is really depends on how you are or how savvy you want to be as a technical animator. The more technical you become, the more useful you become for any studio. So it is a good skill to have. But what I've seen is that a lot of animators actually focus so much on the technical because they think that will make them stand out from the rest, that they are not as good as an animator as they think they are, which then becomes detrimental to their career, right? Because if you start as a good animator and then you learn technical skills later, it's much more beneficial than being a mediocre animator and then actually being really good at technically, right? Because if you are that, then most likely people will just look at your showreel and be like, okay, so you know all this technical stuff, we already have people that do that. What we need is an animator. You don't really surprise us or you don't really impress us as an animator. Therefore, I don't think we're gonna go with you, right? We're gonna to prefer to go with a guy that actually has an impressive showreel for animation because that's what we need, right? So that is basically how you have to think about it. So if you're a really good, skillful animator, then definitely learn the technical skills because that just helps you. But if you are still learning animation and you feel not, that your level is not really like on a AAA level yet, or it's not really at the level that people are hiring you or send you offers, left, right, and center, then continue working on your animation skills. That's, that will be my suggestion. So you can then become to that like elite level animator and then at that point, when you're there, then most likely you're gonna get offers anyways, and you can then learn the technical skills at a later point, right? So that's basically kind of how things go when it comes to animation, gameplay, and being technical in games. It's not a clear answer, it's not a, like a black and white, because we don't have a linear pipeline like in film, that you have certain departments and then you start here and then you just go down the pipe until you have a rendered shot. In games, it's very much like a I like to see it as a circle with the engine right in the middle and everybody's pumping things in, but sometimes things get pumped out because they don't work. So you have to kind of like do your work, pump it all in, see if it works and continue doing it until the game is shipped. So this is why it's not really linear. It really depends on the studio where you are in the process, all these things, right? So I hope that was useful. If you are interested in becoming a gameplay animator, consider maybe checking my animation mentorship where I do a one-on-one -on -one mentorship and teach you guys how to actually better your skills to get that dream job. If you're interested, links down below. And also shout out to everybody supporting me on Patreon because they are the ones kind of keeping this channel alive, supporting me every single month. Massive thanks, you can see their names here. And if you are interested in supporting this channel, all the money that I get in Patreon goes straight back in. So that was all that I had for this week. If this was useful to you in any ways, consider subscribing, pressing the like button, and drop a comment and let me know if you have any more questions about being a gameplay animator. Or if you are a gameplay animator, drop a comment down below, share experiences, because I feel like there needs to be more of us out there, kind of like talking a little bit more about what gameplay animation is, because I feel like it still feels like a mystery for, to everybody that is outside of games, right? To all the gamers and everybody that is curious about how games are made, I feel like they still don't understand what gameplay animation entails. So the more we talk about it, the more we comment about it, the more people know and the more excited they will be to join us in the games industry. And that's all I had for you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And as always, stay well, stay safe. Peace.